you journal in the way that works for you. I can use a large journal with notes and ideas written across the pages. I can use little A6 booklets. This one I've had for more than 40 years. Here's a little illustration I sketched out when I was in Yucatan in September of 1984. It's got drawings and illustrations in it, but this book's also got page after page of what happened during the day, how I felt, did I get lost on the footpath. Journals are simply the way for you to take ideas from here and put them onto paper in a way that is designed to serve you, not by the people who manufacture the booklets, but by you serving yourself, by you looking after yourself. One of the most important things that's happening when you and I journal is we're taking our ideas from here, we're using the pen to transfer those thoughts and ideas and concepts to paper. It helps us get to a place where when we are ready, we are perhaps able to make better decisions about some of the things that are occurring in our life. On the other hand, journals are also a wonderful way of just dropping ideas onto paper that you don't have to do anything with, that require no subsequent action. There's no formal follow-up to see whether the idea that came from here and was transferred to these journals ever came to anything. Remember, there is nothing that you can get wrong about this. You take the pen or the pencil and you grab your notebook and you start to get into a little regular habit of perhaps capturing five minutes of your thoughts at the end of a the day. There's a big conversation around something called morning pages. I very rarely write in the morning because the last thing I want to do when I get out of bed is grab a pen and put words to paper. That's just not my time of the day. Find a time of the day that works. And again, in terms of style, there's no right or wrong. You might like a big letter-sized document or something as simple as an A6 booklet that's easy to carry around with you wherever you go. The process I'm sharing here is simply that of how I have set up my journal for the month ahead and why that works for me. The best suggestion I can make is that you use a journal and you try it for 30 days, a calendar month, and then you think, what did I learn from this? How can I go forward? What might I do ever so slightly differently in the way that I capture what happens? And after 30 days, have a think about what worked out, what you would like to change and do differently. Maybe you write at different times. Maybe you use a different type of pen. Maybe this booklet was too big. Maybe these were too small. You find a happy medium because this is your process and your way of journaling. March starts on a Friday, I'm simply going to use a right-hand page because I typically will use three days on a right-hand page to mark out the Friday and the Saturday and the Sunday. I know, for example, and I should put those in here, that this is the first, the second is the Saturday, And the third is the Sunday, and I'm marking out my weekends in a different colour than the days that I'm using for the week. So I've got Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I want to be able to look at a page at a glance and see what month I'm in when I turn the page for my diary or my journal pages 
that are for capturing what happens during the course of the day and then the extra sections for notes. Because March begins on the 1st, I'm going to use this spare left-hand page for notes and I can use that also perhaps as an index for some of the activities that will happen in the course of the month and I can record short versions of it there. So I've got March, I'm going to fill this in as we go through the month. In March we've got 31 days, so we've got several double page spreads for the weeks represented by March. And going through that and creating these is straightforward. When you create your journal, you're finding something and building something that is for you. It's not for anybody else. And it might be that you have seen lots of other videos where you put in pretty stickers and flowers and maybe you get a few nice crayons and you colour in the month as you go through it or you put pictures and lovely drawings in. Nothing wrong with that. But for me, the journal is about capturing the things that happen and looking at my responses or my feelings to those events and activities and thinking, how does this affect my life? How does this impact what I want to do as a writer, a YouTuber, and a person who's looking at family activities and our financial and investing activity. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, first, second, third. Here I'm going for four days. I always tend to use four days on the left-hand side of my journals. So I've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. As we know by now, this is my Friday. And I'm going to give that extra colour to the Saturday and the Sunday. Saturday and Sunday. Notice that I'm using lined pages in this particular journal. You can use, of course, a blank document. If you remember some of the other journals that I've worked on before and I've shared with you, this one is one of the Paper Chase examples. I used to get these from the Paper Chase store not far from us in Leeds in Yorkshire. But since the Paper Chase stock was all taken over and moved into Tesco supermarkets, these you can still find because Tesco has improved their stationary range. These Paper Chase books, which are very similar size to the Red Point book that I'm using here in Mexico, and you can create good lined entries in these pages using these. But this is what I've used for a couple of years and I really enjoyed it. Notice what was nice about these books is that they already come with the page numbers here in the corner. What I tend to do nowadays, and I'm doing it with this journal which was from Red Spot at Office Depot here in Mexico City. What I've been doing is hand numbering the pages and just using a different colour ink so that I highlight those and make those really obvious. So you go through your diary and you fill in the week and the dates and any significant events that you know about. One of the things I love about using these hardback letter size or almost A4 journals is the amount of space that's available. Here on the left hand page I've got notes and an index activity page for the course of the month. So as something significant happens, I can simply put a date in here, not all the days of the month, but the dates in which I want to record something and keep that safe for easy access in the future. But on my right hand page, where I only ever have the Friday, Saturday and Sunday, on the Sunday, I can do a review of the week and bring into play the things that have happened during the week that are significant or interesting. One of the things that for me I always like to record is YouTube. So I've got for the Nick Sturgeon Books and the Faceless channel, I want to look at the hours watched in the course of a week and the number of people who are regularly watching those videos because they have subscribed. Other things I can put in here would be summaries of writing activity, time visiting the park, and those sorts of activities. In very much the same way that I'm tracking and reviewing what happens in the course of a week, this page at the end of my journal notes and the diary entry options for the journal, 
this allows me to look at the things that have happened during the course of the month and how I think that might be something I can improve on for the next month. Maybe I need to reduce some activities and balance out with others. But for example here, I've got a column for my regular writing. Now there, I could still fit in, there's enough space there to put the word count achieved in a given day and possibly a code or a little letter for whether I write at home or out at a coffee shop. So it could be H or C for home and coffee shop plus the word count. And that neatly gives me at the end of the month a column total so I can work out the hours invested in my writing activity as well as the productivity in terms of the word output. In the second column, I've put something for physical activity. I enjoy my bike and I enjoy walking around the park. If you prefer swimming or going to the gym, that's potentially the column where you could capture the activity and the proportion of your time in a given month that you allocate to that same activity. I've put in reading for relaxation. You could put in reading, you could put in television, you could put in cinema, whatever it is. Basically, in this column, you're looking at a form of leisure activity that isn't about exercise or fitness. It's something that you enjoy. Here, I've put a couple of columns for different aspects of finance, one for rental income and the other for regular dividends that come in each month. And the final column here for family, again, is social and dinners. We live in a very social situation. And so meeting up with friends for dinner at least once a week is an important aspect of the time that we have together as a couple. But being with and around family is something that will also get tracked in here. And at the end of the month, it gives us a sense of the spending that we might have on social activity, but also the events. And those events will, of course, be recorded earlier in the journal according to the dates and the times where we put those activities in the diary section. After the monthly summary and the setting of focus for the month ahead and the breakdown on a two-page spread of the week as it occurs, reviewing the week that takes place and then looking at tracking the various activities, what I like to use is various pages for notes at the end of a given month. I will typically use three pages for general notes. These notes have a very general entries. So it's not to do with my family, YouTube, writing, or finance and investing roles, but more general activity. The following four pages in the journal, these are for the activity about family, YouTube, writing and finance and those pages are for me to capture and record specific entries that relate to perhaps income received conversations with tenants planning activity with family recording of ideas for youtube but also keeping track of the number of videos recorded and the length of those videos here on the writing tab i will include things like the visits i make to the local library the research that i need to do the finishing of a manuscript, whether it's first draft, second draft, etc., perhaps trips to photocopying and add those costs and expenses. But that's about tracking my progress. Anything to do with writing. On the finance notes page for the end of the month of March, I will be able to look back and see various entries that I've made during the course of this given month. It will have the dates of dividend income, the dates of rent income received, but also consideration of what I might be thinking about investing in and looking at my thought process for the pros and cons of such and such an investment or a loan idea and, and making notes about those here. Again, giving me the detail for the month at hand. Let's look now at what these pages represent for the coming month. You're setting up a new set of pages in your journal to take you into and through the next month, wherever you are in the year, this just happens to be mine for this next month in the spring of 2024. I've got a calendar summary of the whole month. I've got my idea of focus for the month on these things which happen to be the areas where I have my values. And those for me are family, YouTube, writing 
and personal finance and investing activity. Over the page, I have an index for the significant things that happen in the month. And this is where I will make a little note if I have, for example, a significant conversation or a document to review or a family party. A little summary of all these things will find its way into this index page for later reference as and when I need it. Then I have my typical week spread out over the course of two pages. In my journal, I'm showing my week from a Monday to a Sunday night. My first writing or publishing activity on a Monday and my final planning activity on the Sunday afternoon or evening. So I've got various spreads like that across the course of the month of March. And then we get into this summary page. This gives me a really great clear view of the course of and use of my time over the course of a given month based on splitting it down into the activities which for me are significant or important, but certainly activities which I allocate value and meaning to. You choose these columns completely. I've only chosen five themes here, one of them with two columns. You could have 10 or a dozen themes across the course of your open page journal. This is just my take on the process of setting up your journal. Maybe a letter sized notebook was too large. Maybe these little A6 booklets are either too hard or too difficult for you to use. You'll probably find that you like blank paper or lined paper. Maybe you'll go for dot grid format paper, but you'll find what's right for you. And after the first 30 days, my suggestion is that you stick with this for three full calendar months until you are happy with the process. And it might well be that after the initial 30 day trial and having set up and used your journal for the whole month, you actually decide, yes, I'm really happy with this. I enjoy the process and I want to continue into the future. And if this allows you to come from a place of making better informed decisions because you take the ideas and the thoughts that you capture on paper and you bring those into present day reality for the things that are on your mind and that you want to make the best decisions about, then journaling could well be the way to go. If you can use one or two or all of those ideas for setting up a journal in such a way that it takes you through a whole calendar month and allows you to then review what you could do differently and better for your style and for your preferences, then I'm really pleased. Wherever you are, happy journaling, happy scribing, get those thoughts down on paper and create and set up a journal that works for you.